Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone's doing well. Today I wanted to talk real quick about two PC setups and um, how essentially uh, you would want to buy something like this, 4K60 or, or uh, uh, Mark II, Elgato Mark II, in order to run a monitor that is above 1080p. And the reason that I say that is something like the HD60S, which is the cheapest option currently uh, of all the Elgato capture cards. It's only 135. This one's about $100 more. You can still buy this cheaper option and be able to stream and keep your monitor's resolution like for example, my monitor, my main gaming monitor is 1440p. Well, I can't directly connect this HD60S up to my 1440p monitor without the HD60S scaling my 1440p down to 1080p. And it looks like a blurry mess and I really don't like it. So the secondary option would be to have a secondary monitor connected to your gaming rig you download OBS to your gaming rig, and with your HD60S capture card, you connect your secondary monitor to your capture card. So you link the two together, you clone them together. And then your main gaming monitor is left here. And what you do is you download OBS and you put up display capture, game capture, whatever. For my specific rig, I did notice a lot of people were saying, you know, download the game capture and use that. But for whatever reason, I couldn't get it to get out of a black screen. So I ended up using display capture. For me, it works just fine. And what you want to do is you right click on this, you click full screen projector, and then you click your secondary monitor. And then you can project your 1440p screen onto your secondary monitor, monitor and then your HD60S sees that. So then when it sends the data over to your streaming PC, it you, you guys, as the viewers, can see the projected image. And then you can keep your 1440p or your 4K monitor as it is instead of it getting scaled down. And like I said, you could buy a more expensive capture card, but let's say you already have the HD60S like me and you don't want to spend another $300 to get one or you know, whatever it would be. Uh, at the time of recording, it was like $135 for the HD60S and like $235. So, you know, $250, we'll say, to be more precise. Um, I don't want to have to spend another $250 to get a better capture card that's capable of 1440p or 4K streaming. Uh, so I have the HD60S. What can I do with that? And this is exactly, this solves that issue. But that's been covered in other videos. What I haven't seemed to uh, notice is in those videos, it doesn't talk about the settings because when I did this, I was using the game New World because that game seems to be very intensive on your GPU. So if I could make this work for that game, it'll work on any game. And so what I found in the settings is the first thing you go to is your output tab. I put the encoder to x264. So then I was taking some of that power being used off of the GPU and putting it on the CPU. And I couldn't tell if this was important or not, but I just set it at faster and just left it that way. I don't know if this would affect anything. I didn't see it affecting anything. But since you're not streaming with this anyway, it doesn't really matter if you set this to just be a little bit nicer on your CPU. So I have it at faster. Then you go into your video and I have it set as the base canvas resolution of 1080p because that's what the HD60S is capable of doing. So you wanna make sure that's 1080p. And then the, out scale, uh, the output scaled resolution, I like to stream in 1080p. It's easier to export my videos over to YouTube. So I have it set at 1080p, but you can go down to 720 if you uh, if you're going to record or, or do uh, streaming, uh, and you want it to be just you know a little bit uh, 
easier on your computer. Like, let's say you have like 1060, 1070, 1080 Ti or whatever, and you don't have a 28 uh, series like I do. Um, if you have a 30 series, you don't have to worry about it at all. But um, if it's just too a little bit too intense to uh, go at 1080 or your stream looks really, really bad, just set this to 720. I found that Lanxos for me, maybe you guys should test this to see how it looks. But for me, the Lanxos seemed to be the um, smoothest. But you have, you know, three others that you could test besides Lanxos. I tested all of them, found Lanxos for my rig was just the best. This is the most crucial thing right here that I could not find anybody talking about really, except for like on a couple forums that took me a while to find. But they said setting this to 30 was what did it for them. That was like the biggest thing is having it running at 30 FPS. I don't particularly understand why this would affect anything because you, like I said, you're not streaming with the OBS that's on your gaming. You're just creating a projection so people can see your main monitor. So I don't really understand why this would have any significant impact. However, it does. <clears throat> so make sure that you find 30 and you set it to that. Because that is by far the most important thing that you can do for projecting your screen uh, to your streaming PC. So... That's really all you have to worry about as far as that goes. And uh, also, um, I don't, I, once again, I don't know if this affected anything, but I was just going for as little of a load on my CPU as possible. So I went ahead and just disabled the preview just to be absolutely sure, because in some cases I was seeing that this does have an effect and it, it will reduce the amount of load. So disable your preview. You don't need it anyway, because once you bring this up and you right click this and you go to your full screen projector, go to the mon the secondary monitor, whatever that is for you and click that and it will create the projection. Uh, you can see what you're seeing uh, through the projection. You don't even need the preview. So, yeah, disable that and you should be all good to go after that. So I hope this is informative. I hope it helps you out. Like, comment, share, subscribe, uh, let everybody know, you know, these, like, there's quite a few videos out there to do this, but they don't explain, like, specifically what are the best settings, and I would tell them to dis disable preview and setting uh, it to 30 FPS, that's the best two things that you can do. Once I did those two things, or I shouldn't say once I did those two things, because I'm sure the enable preview, the reason that I'm saying it this way, okay, is I'm sure the disabling the preview will help somebody out there, especially people with older graphics cards, 1060, 1070, 1080, so on. This will probably make a difference. I didn't personally see a difference on my RTX 2080. I didn't, I didn't notice a difference, but I'm throwing it out there because in all cases, you should do that anyway, just to be sure. But the most important thing is making sure your FPS is set to 30. And while I was, you know, doing my live streams and stuff like that on Twitch, uh, I did notice that the game in parts was dropping below 60. But because it was set to 30 FPS, it looked like it was keeping up with no problem with what I was doing on my main monitor. Didn't see any lag or glitches or anything moving slower than it was supposed to. And when it dropped below 60... I was seeing a little bit of lag on my main monitor, but it wasn't showing on the projection because it didn't drop below 30. So that's another nice thing too, is like you might have lag and stuff like that in your, you know, when you're playing the game, but it won't pick it up on the projection. So it's really nice. Like if you're playing video games and stuff like that, and it drops below 60, it starts to stutter. It won't see that on the projection. So if you're streaming or recording either or it's nice because it's going to pretty much for the most part unless it drops below 30 which is extremely rare it'll always be a smooth looking video for you which is really nice so yeah just wanted to help you guys out with that explain that there are some settings like the the videos seem to end at 
this is how you do this, but they don't explain the settings because I had some major lag and stuttering going on until I set that from 60 to 30 FPS in OBS. So yeah, anyway, um, I'll catch you guys on the next one, all right? Later.